Hi, it's Doug from Rise Above Foreign Train. Today in the Sports Performance Series, we're going to talk about shin splints. This is one of the uh, painful, mild injuries that some of my young athletes get. Shin splints are associated with pain down the front of the shin, and it can be caused by several factors. One are growing pains, so a lot of kids are in their um, pubescent years where they're starting to grow, and the muscles can be pulling away from the shin, causing some pain. Yeah, couple that with uh, late practices, you know, constantly practicing every day, pounding their joints on hard surfaces, that can cause more stress on the bones. Also, muscle imbalances. So if one side's stronger than the other, it's gonna take up a little bit more stress than the other side. Joint mobility problems, if the ankle's not moving very well, it's also gonna take uh, stress and cause some pain in that area. Lastly, two foot strikes are important. Again, it kind of coincides with mobility, but if they land and pronate the foot, which is turning in, that causes force to be directed in an improper direction and cause some pain in the shin. Today I'm gonna to show you some ways to alleviate pain in the shin splints. It's gonna be a little bit of soft tissue work. It's gonna be a little bit of strength strengthening as well. Now, if you have chronic shin splints, it's probably best to go to the doctor. It could be something much bigger than the normal shin splint. It could be compartment, compartment syndrome, excuse me, or it can also be some type of stress fracture. And uh, continuing doing your activities will probably just make it worse and you can have some trouble down the road. So we're gonna start with some soft tissue work and uh, we'll take it from there. So we're gonna start with some soft tissue work. I always recommend foam rolling the whole body before a workout, but today I'm gonna to just show you one general area that you want to focus on that kind of gets neglected um, when people do their foam rolling. A lot of people will foam roll just the posterior side of the body, hamstrings, glutes, maybe a little bit of quad, but they neglect the shin. So we're gonna foam roll the shin. There's an anterior tibialis muscle in there that can get a little bit tight and pull on that shin. So to foam roll the shin, and if you have uh, some shin splints, it's going to hurt a little bit, so you don't want to grind it out. You're going to take your roller, set it down. You want to roll on the outside of the shin, the lateral aspect. The medial portion or the middle part does not have any muscle. So I want to turn my toe slightly. I like to cross this just here for a little bit of support. And I'm just going to roll from the bottom of my knee to my ankle and roll in there. Now to shift your hands a little bit, so we're just going to roll right in there. If you have a lot of pain, find the spot with a little bit of pain, just let it sit there and dissipate. You don't need to grind it out. And as the weeks go on, then you can start slowly rolling a little bit more. Another one that I really like is to roll the bottom of the foot in that plantar fascia. So the plantar fascia is that netting that controls all the foot muscles. So all these leg muscles attach into the foot, especially in the lower leg. And if the netting in there is really tight, it can cause overpronation, but also cause the muscles to be imbalanced and also the ankle. So find a lacrosse ball or a baseball, something comparable, something pretty firm. And I recommend taking off your shoes for this or else it's not gonna be very effective. So I'm gonna take off my shoe. And it's pretty simple. You're just gonna put down on the floor, and I'm just going to stay on it and I'm going to roll. So I like to roll that medial arch. I'm just kind of rolling in and then rolling around here. This is also really going to do if um, you know, you're at work, you can just take off your shoe and have this on your desk. If you're at school and your uh, teacher allows it, you might be able to take off your shoe and roll a little bit in there. And you're just getting that plantar fascia loose so the ankle moves a little bit better. Okay, so next we're just going to go to some mobility of the uh, ankle and uh, we're going to do some strengthening as well. Thanks. So I'm going to do some ankle mobilization drills right now. Again, I like to have the shoes off for these type of things since it's also going to help the proprioception and also get the ankles to move a little bit freer. Sometimes shoes can bind up the ankles and you're not going to get the desired effect that you want. So one is the wall mobility. You can use any solid platform. I'm going to use the rack here. I'm going to just put my toe fairly close to the edge of the rack. Just use this for support. And I'm going to have my other foot right alongside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my heels down and lean in with my hips and back off. Now, I want to keep my back foot down too because if I don't, it's just going to be pretty easy. You can get a decent mobilization of an ankle, but let's just keep both down. And we just want to move the ankle and back off. And as we get a little bit better, we'll be able to get more forward.
So you can do about eight to 10 passes before a workout and that'll help mobilize the ankle. Obviously do it on both sides, but for time restraints, we're just gonna keep it to one. So the second thing I like to do is a strengthening exercise, but also a mobilization is a standard calf raise. A lot of people uh, don't do calf raise anymore because they think it's good, you know, for the calf muscles. It is, but it's also good for ankle mobility and also strengthens the uh, front muscle, the anterior tibialis here. Uh, I'm gonna do both legs at the same time. You can do a single leg. And I'm just gonna hold a weight too to add a little extra weight. So what you're gonna do, you can hold on here. Have your feet about halfway off. So you want the balls of your feet on there. The, this one's really nice because you can get a nice dorsiflexion of the foot. So the ankle can drop below parallel. So if you're standing, it's not gonna go this low. So we can get a nice stretch in the Achilles tendon and strengthen the ankle that way in the dorsiflexion. Uh, then we're gonna toe raise towards plantar flexion. Now I want to try to keep them aligned. I don't want to curve in too much and I don't want to flare out. So I want to keep them nice and aligned, have all the toes touching, raise up. I like to pause here just a little bit for stability and drop down, get a stretch, squeeze up and drop down. Now another option of that is just doing it standing. So I've been adding these in a little bit and they've worked pretty well. Now standing, you're not gonna get that extra dorsiflexion of the heel dropping, but you're gonna get a lot more stability uh, challenge within the foot. So you can do this with a weight or you can do a body weight. So all you're gonna do is you can toe raise, pause and then come down, pause and come down, and try to toe raise, uh, trouble on that one. So try to toe raise, just on that one foot, keeping everything aligned, little pause at the top, so you work on that stability. Trying both feet out. You wanna to try to get as high as you can, and be as stable as you can on that foot. One side might be a little bit easier to do than the other. So lastly, I'm gonna show you a band exercise, so let me get set up and we'll show you that. Okay, hey, lastly, I'm going to show one more strength exercise, and it's going to strengthen the ankle and the calf and the anterior tibialis. Um, you can do this with a partner. You can have someone looping um, the band around your foot and holding on to it. If you don't have friends like me, you can hook it around a, a rack and just tie it off. So I'm just going to loop it around my foot and get a little bit of tension here. I'm going to try to sit tall. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze and bring my toe toward me and then control back. If I need a little bit more tension, I can pull back this way. But I want to get, oh, ankle crack, decent range of motion. Giving you guys my uh, problem side, <laughs> so I can get a little more extra work. But, so what I'm doing is I'm just mobilizing that ankle, squeezing the calf, and then getting that traction and tension from the band to help stretch out that anterior tibialis. And that'll help strengthen it up. You can go different directions. It's a little bit um, more challenging when you don't have someone holding on to you, but you can um, hold the band the other way. So you can hold the band the other way and you get the resistance the other direction. So I'm gonna flex forward and then control back. Flex forward and control back. So that's a different angle of resistance that can help strengthen up that area. This is a little bit more aggressive to do it with the band. So if you're having terrible shin splints, this might not feel the best on there. I recommend doing uh, the mobil mobilization, the soft tissue work, and then uh, you know maybe some body weight calf raises, kind of get it going. When it starts feeling a little bit better, find a band that's appropriate and do you know, small sets and small reps to kind of get it going and incorporating that with your other main lifts. And it should help the shin splints out. Obviously, you know, a little bit of rest from your sport will uh, make a difference. Making sure your footwear is uh, good and up to date, that will also help out a lot. So try these out if you've got some shin splints. Let me know what you think and um, we'll see you soon.